Here on number 43, we're going to need to solve the system using substitution. So to do that, we need to isolate one of the variables um, in one of the equations. Now, if I were to choose the top equation, I would have to apply the square root to isolate either x or y. So I don't want to complicate things by putting the square root into the function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the bottom e function and I'm going to solve for one of the variables. I'm going to go ahead and solve for x. I could have easily solved for y instead. Um, this is just what I'm choosing to do. It is um, a choice at this point. So I get x equal to 8 minus y. And then this expression that I have here for x is going to replace x in the second equation. So I'm going to have, um, instead of x, I'm going to have 8 minus y squared. plus y squared equal to 40. Then I'm going to go ahead and square that so it means 8 minus y times another 8 minus y, which I will have to FOIL out. So I will get 64 minus 8y minus 8y plus y squared plus this other y squared equal to 40. So I end up with 2y squared minus 16y and a positive 64 equal to 40. So the equation that I have left is a quadratic, which means in order for me to solve a quadratic, I have to have it set equal to zero. So I'm gonna minus 40 on both sides, and I get 2y squared minus 16y plus 24, now equal to zero. Then I'm gonna factor this. So I can factor out a two, However, um, if I were to set each factor, I cannot factor this any further because there's no factors of, oh, I'm sorry, that shouldn't be 3. That should be 12 since I'm only factoring out a 2. Ah, then it might be able to factor this. Let's see, 2 factors that multiply to give me 12 but add to give me negative 8. Um, 2 and 6 will do that, and they'll both need to be negative to multiply to give me a positive, but combine to give me a negative 8. So then if I set each factor equal to 0, here there's no variable to solve for, and 2 does not equal 0, so there won't be any solutions given from that factor. However, here I can add 2 to both sides and I get y equals 2, and I can add 6 to both sides, and I will get um, y equals positive 6. Now, I can take these two responses and plug them in to my uh, equation where I solved for x to figure out what the corresponding x values are. So if I take this problem and I plug it into here, I'm going to get x equals 8 minus 2, which is 6. So 6 is the x coordinate, and 2 was the y coordinate that I plugged in. Now we'll do the same thing for this value. So x equals 8 minus 6, and we get 2. So 2 is the x value corresponding to the y value 6 that we plugged in. So these are going to be our two solutions. Now let's try that same process of substitution with number 44. So here we have, um, we definitely don't want to solve for y because again, that's going to require me to use the square root to isolate the y. So that's definitely not the one I want to use. If I try to solve for x in the top equation, I'm going to have to divide by a variable and we really don't want fractions if we can avoid it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the top, the bottom equation and minus y squared on both sides. So that gives me the equation x equals 5 minus y squared. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute this expression for x right here in the top equation for x. So the equation becomes 5 minus y squared 
times y squared equal to 4. And so then we'll go ahead and write distribute the y squared. We get 5y squared minus y to the fourth equal 4. Now this is a polynomial, and in order to solve polynomial equations, we have to get the zero on this side. So I'm going to minus 4 on both sides. And I have 5y squared minus y to the fourth minus 4 now equal to zero. So I definitely want to put this in the correct order so that then I can attempt to factor this. So my y to the fourth is negative, my 5y squared is positive. If you don't like the negative in the front here, you can divide everybody by a negative. And you get positive y to the fourth, negative 5y squared, and a positive 4 equal to still 0. And then if I try to factor this, um, you could use substitution or you could just use the middle variable. Okay, I'm not sure which method you're used to doing this. Um, if you do use substitution, you can say something like let a equal y squared, which is the middle variable. Then a squared would be y squared squared, which is y to the fourth. So then this expression becomes this expression becomes a squared minus 5a plus 4 equal to 0. And if I factor this, I will get a minus 1 and a minus 4. So I will get a equal to 1 and a equal to 4. So then that a though, I was trying to solve for y. So remember that a represents y squared. And if I want to solve for y, I have to apply the square root on both sides. But when I do that, I'm going to get plus or minus the answer. So square root of 1 is 1. Here, plus or minus the square root of 4 is 2. So you actually have four solutions for y. So for each one of those, we're going to have to plug them into this equation here. So first, I'm going to plug in positive 1. So this becomes 5 minus 1, which is 4. So the x value is 4, and the y value I plugged in was a positive 1. Now let's do the same for the negative 1. I still get 5 minus a positive 1, which is 4. So the value is 4, but the y value we plugged in here was negative 1. Now the next value, 2. So 5 minus 2 squared ends up becoming 5 minus 4, which is 1. So 1 is the x value, and the y value we plugged in was 2. Now we're going to do it again for negative 2. So we still end up with y minus a positive which gives me 1, so 1 is the x value, but the y value I plugged in here is a negative 2. So in this problem, you end up with four solutions all represented there.